thank you for my birthday. Thank you for peace and loving. Well, Ringo Starr blew out the candles to mark his 75th birthday this week. The famous drummer and former Beatle celebrated with friends and family in Hollywood. His life has been an incredible journey so far, and it is the subject of a new book called Ringo with a Little Help by author Michael Seth Starr, who's also TV editor for the New York Post. And Michael joins us live this morning in studio to talk about it. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Great and to be here. No relation to Ringo. No relation. It's just a coincidence. <laughs> not Uncle Ringo, not Cousin Ringo. Gotcha. Long lost brother. No. Gotcha. Well, let me let me ask you, why write about Ringo? What was it about him that you thought, man, I gotta, gotta you know, do this? As I said, he's the most famous drummer on the planet. You know, everybody knows Ringo, mm -hmm. um, but they really just know Ringo Beatles. And I, I thought I'd, I'd cover his entire life before the Beatles, during the Beatles, of course, and then after the Beatles, where he's also accomplished a lot. Mm -hmm. He was recently inducted into the, into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame as a solo act. And I just think, in general, people really don't know that much about his private life and his personal life, mm -hmm. um, besides his image as this drummer on the Ed Sullivan Show and then with the Beatles later on. Absolutely. He has had a, an incredible journey, but so many different ups and downs, really starting with his childhood, which you talk about in the book. Yeah, he had a, he had a tough childhood, um, mainly because he was ill. Uh, he had two major illnesses as a, as a kid. He had a burst appendix and he had tuberculosis. Kept him in the hospital for around four years total, mm -hmm. uh, which, um, you know, in those days, he, he, when he went back to school, he, he couldn't catch up because it just, they didn't do that. He didn't learn to read until he was about five or six or even actually, I think, around seven. Mm -hmm. So it kind of set him back a little bit. But, you know, when you look at a guy who overcame all that, ended up, you know, being the, uh, in this unbelievably popular rock group, it's, it's an amazing story. And he was popular in his own right in Liverpool as part of another band before he, he even got he into was. the Beatles. He was. He was in a group called Rory Storm and the Hurricanes, which... Uh, um, they weren't they weren't as popular as the Beatles, but Ringo was known as the best drummer in Liverpool, which is why the Beatles went went on to bring him into the group when they fired their original drummer, Pete mm -hmm. Best. Mm -hmm, yeah. Because you, you, he's the oldest Beatle, but the youngest in terms of right, the last Right, right. Oldest chronologically youngest Beatle in terms of joining the group. And right. you also talk about his issues with substance abuse, the drinking right, and the right. drugs, and how he finally was able to get clean and sober. Yeah, you know, when, when the Beatles broke up, it was 1970, he was only 30. What wow. do you do when you when you come off that kind of right. that kind of musical act? And I think he had trouble sort of getting in touch with himself and, and finding a meaning in life. And he turned to the bottle and he kind of spiraled into alcoholism for about two decades. Uh, he met and married Barbara Bach. He met her on the set of Caveman. They went into rehab together, mm -hmm. kicked it, and um, have been clean and sober ever since. Mm -hmm. And he said he's still the happy-go-lucky Beatle. He just doesn't drink. Yeah, you know, it's uh, he was always you know the funny Beatle. Mm -hmm. uh, Paul was the cute one. George right. was the quiet one. John was the intellectual snarky one. Ringo was always the funny, you know, happy-go-lucky guy, and I think to this day he still is to a certain point, and I think he's accepted his role as an ex-Beatle. What do you think people would be most surprised to learn about him? What surprised you the most? There were a few things. I think, number one, that he, he didn't really take up drumming until he was a teenager, till his second hospital stay. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like he was, you know, came, came out of the womb and was, you know, drumming along. <laughs> right. And um, also that he was the most popular Beatle when, the, when they first came here to the U.S. In, in 1964. I think people think of Lennon and McCoy. McCartney mm -hmm. and Ringo as an afterthought, but that really wasn't the case. And you also talk about just his show of compassion. He was at his ex-wife's bedside when right, she Right, I always found away. that very nice, yeah. Yeah, and also he was the first, you said he was the first to go to uh, Yoko Ono when John Lennon right, was murdered. Right, right. He was the only ex-Beatle to go to Yoko Ono's side. It was his first, first thought he had when he heard about the assassination of John Lennon was to rush to New charter a plane, come to New York, try to comfort Yoko Ono. Mm -hmm. And yes, when his ex-wife Maureen died, they had had a sort of a bitter breakup, but they reconciled reconciled um, and became very friendly, and he was at her bedside when she passed away. And just lastly, what do you hope people take away from this book? I, I just hope they get a sense of uh, how um, his history, his personal history, and how vital he is to the history of pop music and just to, to pop culture in general. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for coming in. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. it. It's a great book, and you can find more about it on CBSNewYork.com. It's also available in stores and online. This is CBS2 News Sunday morning. We'll be right back.